Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back to talk about a bunch of fragrances that I have in my collection that I feel like are completely underrated gems. Um, these are fragrances that I don't hear talked about a lot. Now admittedly I'm not watching a bunch of fragrance videos typically so I don't have I don't really know what's being talked about and what is not but these are fragrances that um, I definitely wasn't influenced by anybody to buy. I've never really heard anybody talk about them, and they're fragrances that I just feel like are criminally underrated, especially, um, I've got a handful in here that are just so good. Most of these, I will say, are very affordable fragrances, um, because I think that that's what happens a lot of the time is people will see a $20 price tag or even less on a perfume and they will automatically assume that it's not going to be good, that the quality might not be great. Um, and I think that that is definitely the case with some of these. And then some of them, I just feel like, um, you know, people just, just don't know that they exist or don't really think about them as houses. So anyways, with all that being said, I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to start with one that um, is a newer one to my collection. This one has was sent over to me recently, and this was one that I had heard about. This is a Zara Wanted Girl. This is one that I had heard about, but I just, I don't know. Um, I've never, I haven't heard like many people talk about it. And it's one that I was so surprised by. Like I have fallen hard for this fragrance and it's one that I just didn't expect to. Um, this is one, this is like, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's sweet, but it's kind of fruity in the top. But this one dries down to a really beautiful, um, kind of sweet caramel fragrance. This is what Prada candy should be, honestly. Yeah, and this one, the longevity on this one, the performance of this one is so much better than Prada Candy. This one lasts forever. I can apply this one time in the morning. It'll get me through an entire day. Yeah, it's just a beautiful, sweet, kind of fruity, caramel type fragrance. It's gorgeous. I think it's got a Dolce de Leche note in it, but yeah, just beautiful. If you are into, if you're like me and you really like sweet perfumes, you really like to smell, um, kind of sweet and edible. I think you would really, really love this fragrance. It's such an underrated little gem. I'm dying to get my nose on some of the flankers of this fragrance too. Somebody told me that they just bought a flanker, maybe at TJ Maxx or something, um, and that it is really, really nice, that they really like it. So now I'm like dying to get my nose on the flankers. So anyways, that is the first one. That is a Zara Girl, uh, sorry, a Zara Wanted Girl. Such a pretty fragrance that nobody is talking about or really doesn't. Okay, these next two that I'm going to talk about, I just think that as a house, this house is woefully underrated. Um, I never hear people talk about fragrances from this house, and the kind of obscure, less expensive ones are the gems. Um, and what I'm talking about is Lanvin. I can't tell you how many times I have recommended this fragrance. Um, this one in particular is called Jean Lanvin, and this is this is one of the easiest, most pleasant, kind of soft, fruity, sweet, floral, like most inoffensive, easy to reach for fragrance in my collection, probably hands down. If I had to have a signature and I could only choose one fragrance out of my collection, this would definitely be in the running. It's it's just such a perfect fragrance. Um, I did send a decant of this over to a fragrance friend. She fell in love with it. She immediately bought a bottle. She got a big tester of it, which is amazing that she got a tester. But yeah, she fell in love with it because it was it's just like magic. And the magic doesn't really happen until it gets on your skin. Um, this one, I've seen it compared on Fragrantica. I've seen this one compared to the Gucci 2, the one that is in the little cube bottle, the one with pink liquid. I definitely do get the similarities. Um, there are differences, and I haven't smelled the Gucci one for so long. Um, I wouldn't be able to articulate the differences for you. I just remember that it doesn't smell exactly like this, but it's close. 
Um, it's just such a beautiful fragrance and it's just such a, a perfect fragrance and it's like a $20 fragrance. So yeah, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I don't know why everybody doesn't have a bottle of this in their collection because it's just such a beautiful, easy fragrance that I never hear anybody talk about. So anyways, that is Jean Lanvin. And then the other one that I absolutely adore is Modern Princess. This is another one that I never hear anybody talk about. And this is the most beautiful apples and cream fragrance. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It reminds me of this one. It smells a lot like Victoria's Secret Oh So Sexy, but this one is more expensive smelling. Um, it's just, it's a little bit higher quality smelling but still just a beautiful sweet apple and chantilly cream fragrance. I just adore it. It's such a beautiful, easy breezy fragrance. This is another one that I just feel like it is criminally underrated. Um, I never hear anybody talk about these fragrances. Now I did try uh, Modern Princess Sensuelle as well and I did not like that one. Um, that one wasn't, um, I don't know, I think I was expecting something really lovely like this and it ended up, it ended up being one of those, I think like pencil shaving, um, kind of synthetic cedar bombs. It wasn't anything really nice, but this one, oh, is so good. And again, it's like a $20 fragrance or in that price range. And I just feel like it's, it would make an amazing addition to anybody's collection. So anyways, that is Lanvin Modern Princess. Okay, this next one, this is one that I never hear anybody talk about. And even you guys, only really ever talk about it in the comments when I show it in a video and I think it's honestly it's one of those fragrances that just a lot of us forget about but we all really love it this is Kim Kardashian pure honey um, the the bottle on this one is obnoxious I'm not gonna lie it's heavy it's like a super heavy bottle um, it's very awkward to spray it's very hard to get into your hand to spray it I mean you can see and I have small hands so you really have to like, a lot of the times I have to use two hands, I'll have to spray with my thumb. But yeah, it's just a very, it's an incredibly awkward bottle. But this, the actual perfume inside, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. It really is like this beautiful, sweet, white floral, smooth honey fragrance. The honey is, pretty prominent in this. So if you don't enjoy honey or if honey um, oftentimes goes weird on your skin, this might not be a good one because it definitely does have a very prominent honey note, but it just blends so well with the florals. It's just such a beautiful, pretty dense smelling honey and floral fragrance, but I love it. This is another one that it's like, it smells better on skin than it does in the bottle or on paper. This one lasts, oh, let me tell you, I keep forgetting, I'm so sorry you guys, I keep forgetting to talk about longevity. Jean Lanvin, this thing lasts forever. For the being the type of fragrance that it is, I can easily get six or eight hours out of it. Um, I used to be able to wear this one to work and I could still smell it at the end of a 10 hour day. So yeah, this one for me is a beast. Uh, Modern Princess I can get, especially in the heat, I can get a good six to eight hours out of this one as well. Um, I just really have to overspray this one and get it on my clothing a lot. Um, but yeah, I'll easily get six or eight hours out of this one too. It's, these are, they're great. Um, and this one, this is a beast. I can ease, I always overspray this and I can easily get 10 hours out of this. This is another one that I used to be able to wear to work and I had no problem getting an entire work day out of it. I don't ever hear anybody talk about this. I just think it's such a beautiful underrated gem and it's really, really inexpensive. The only thing about it is the bottle is pretty. Don't get me wrong. It's a really beautiful bottle, but it's just, it's a very awkward bottle to try to spray. Okay, these next ones, this is another house that I think that is like Lanvin. I just feel like it is so underrated and they have some of the most beautiful and unique fragrances ever. Um, and that is Salvador Dali. Now I've got two pen sprays here. These are two pen sprays 
that I need to pick up a full bottle of because I love them. These are two fragrances that I love so much and I only have this little amount of it so I don't wear them because I don't wanna run out of them but I need to just buy a full bottle and I'm a complete crazy person. But anyways, this one is called Laguna and oh, Laguna is such a, oh, it is such a unique gem. It's kind of like a fresh, it kind of smells like fresh air, but it's got a creaminess to it. And it's a creaminess that is there without any kind of sweetness, really. There might be like the slightest tiny hint of sweetness, but it's more of just like a fresh, a very fresh and slightly creamy fragrance. This one leans just a touch masculine but it is so beautiful. It's got some bright citruses in the top, those fresh, whatever the fresh notes are in the middle, and then something beautiful and creamy. It's fresh, it's citrusy, it's slightly masculine, and so unique. It is beautiful. I very rarely hear anybody talk about this fragrance, and I think that that is I mean, it is so incredibly underrated. These are very affordable fragrances too. Um, and this is just a beauty. It's such a beautiful warm weather fragrance. So that is the first one that is called Laguna. And then this second one, this is called Eau de Ruby Lips. And I don't know which fragrance came out first. I don't know if this came out or if Bond number no. 9, The Scent of Peace came out for her, um, but this smells almost identical to Bond number no. 9, The Scent of Peace. Um, I have tested them side by side. They are almost identical. Yeah, this is another, it is like a perfect, it's a perfect warm weather fragrance. It's slightly sweet, it's clean, it's a little bit shampoo-y. It's got some fruits in it without being like fruity. It's mostly a very clean shampoo-y fragrance. I just love it. And like I said, it is almost identical to Bond Number no. 9, The Scent of Peace. Um, I picked up a sample, like a carded sample of the Bond Number no. 9 fragrance in just a random uh, fragrance nut order. And as soon as I sprayed it, I knew, I was like, I have something in my collection that smells identical to this and I pulled out my Eau de Ruby lips and it was this. In fact, I'm trying to get another dupes video together because I know you guys really enjoyed the dupes video that I did like years ago. I'm trying to get another one together. Um, but yeah, this would definitely be in that dupes video because it's such a beautiful fragrance and it's so, so much less expensive than the Bond number no. nine. So anyways, that is Eau de Ruby Lips from Salvador Dali. I just feel like it is so, this one really is criminally underrated. Um, I just think it's such a beautiful, affordable gem. So anyways, yeah, Salvador Dali, Eau de Ruby Lips. Okay, this next one is a Sucre Bay fragrance, and this is one that I never hear anybody talk about. Um, I, think there, I think one of you bought it maybe after I had recommended it in a video. And so there is one of you that I have talked about how much we both love it. But other than that, I don't hear many people talk about this. And this is such a stunning fragrance, especially for my vanilla lovers out there. Um, this is called Strangeling from Sucre Bay. And this is the most beautiful, boozy vanilla fragrance I have ever smelled. In fact, it is probably the booziest fragrance I have ever smelled. It has got such a prominent cognac note that that's really, it's, I mean, it's almost more of a cognac fragrance than it is a vanilla fragrance, but it's got this beautiful, sweet, creamy vanilla base. So it is like this gorgeous, boozy cognac fragrance with a sweet vanilla base. This thing lasts absolutely forever on my skin. This is one that I can, I just have a roller ball to. Um, but I can roll this on in the morning and 
it'll, it, this is one that I used to be able to wear to work. It would get me through an entire 10 hour workday, no problem. And it's linear. So what you smell in the bottle when you put it on your skin is what you get in the dry down and what you smell like all day, which is the most gorgeous vanilla infused cognac fragrance ever. It's so good. This is another one that is so underrated and uh, more people need to get their noses on this. It's, like I said, especially my vanilla lovers out there, um, I think you would really, really like this. This one has so much vanilla in it, you can see it in the rollerball. Look at all that vanilla. It's so, like there's so much vanilla in it. It is so stunning. So anyways, that one is called Strangeling from Sucre Bay. It's such a beautiful, underrated fragrance. Okay, next is a Corlaf fragrance. Um, I think I just talked about this not too long ago, but man, do I love this fragrance. This is called Corlaf Gold. This is for sure my most favorite beachy fragrance. I love it so much. It's, it's beachy white florals and coconut, but it's a very, very smooth beachy white floral and coconut. Um, it doesn't it kind of smells like suntan lotion, but it's not it's not like in your face. I Don't know the coconut is very fresh and creamy smelling in this The white flowers are blended beautifully with it. So nothing is overpowering It's just one of my favorites Beachy fragrances ever. It's like a $20 perfume um, on its own it doesn't last very long at all. But if you layer this over some kind of lotion, whether it be like a coconut lotion or just a plain lotion, um, if you layer it over some lotion, it lasts forever. I remember being so, so surprised this past summer when I did that and how, like how much of a difference it made in the performance of this. Um, it's just such a beautiful, underrated summertime fragrance. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. It can easily rival any beachy fragrance out there. It can easily rival um, Alien Goddess or um, Girl on Terracotta or Bobbi Brown Beach. Any of those beachy fragrances, this can easily rival it. I mean, it just smells amazing. It's such an affordable gem that nobody talks about. So anyways, that is Korloff Gold. Okay, next is like a $12 amber fragrance and it is such a beautiful amber and that is Halston Woman Amber. This really is, it's such an affordable, beautiful amber. It's like a $12 amber, but you would never know that. I think I picked my bottle up for like 12 bucks. And this could easily be any one of my expensive ambers. Um, like you could easily put this in my Ely Saab Essence Number no. 3 Ombre bottle and I would never know. Like I would not know that this is a $12 Halston Amber fragrance. It's just a very, very beautiful, affordable gem of an amber. And I never hear anybody talk about this one either. This is another one that I just... I don't know, people might be talking about some of these fragrances. If you guys have heard other people talk about these, any of these, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know. I don't know, I would just like to know if there are other people out there that like these. But this is such an affordable, beautiful amber. If, if anybody, if somebody came to me and said, what would be a great beginner amber? This is where I would point them. Number one, because it's not super expensive. And number two, because it's a really beautiful amber without breaking the bank. It smells much more expensive than it actually is. And it's just beautiful. So anyways, that is Halston Amber Woman. Sorry, Halston Woman Amber. Okay, another one, I talked about this I can't remember in another video and I talked about how this was such an affordable gem or just such an underrated fragrance. This is Pure DKNY from um, DKNY and I think now it's called Pure, Pure DKNY A Drop of Vanilla, I think. But that's what this is. It's a really beautiful clean vanilla fragrance and I love it. It's very slightly sweet, it's clean but it's got this really beautiful hint 
of creamy vanilla in the base. So it kind of gives me the Salvador Dali uh, Laguna vibes in that it's this really beautiful, fresh, clean fragrance that has just a hint of like a creamy vanilla in the base. It's stunning. It's again, woefully underrated. Nobody ever talks about these fragrances. Um, I haven't, I've tried the drop of Verbena one. It's also beautiful. Um, I really need to get my nose on the a drop of Rose one. I have a feeling it will be stunning as well. They're just beautiful, underrated, very, very affordable fragrances that I never hear anybody talk about. So anyways, that is pure DKNY from uh, DKNY. And these next ones, I'm gonna talk about them kind of both at the same time. These are oils from our Moth. You can pick these up on Amazon if I remember correctly. Um, this one is called Tag Her Pour Femme from our Moth. And this one here is a Jenny Glow oil. This one is called Peony. And these are like, I wanna say they're like $18 on Amazon. Um, these are huge. These are 20 mil bottles of oil, of street oil. Um, they are, oh my gosh, they're incredible. They make fragrance last absolutely forever. This one here, the Tag Her, it smells a little bit like um, light blue from Dolce & Gabbana, but this is sweeter and yeah, this one is sweeter. It's still got that beautiful citrus. Um, like sweet creamy citrus though and anytime I wear any of my light blues I put this oil on first and then I layer my light blue over it to try to get my light blues to perform better because typically they just don't um, and this one here the Jenny Glow Peony oh my gosh this is just a stunning sweet floral fragrance and this one I usually just wear on its own and it's such a crowd pleaser. People love it. It's just such an easy, sweet floral. Um, and these oils last forever. I used to wear these to work a lot because they would get me through an entire 10 hour workday with ease. And I just think that they're such underrated fragrances, especially for the price. You get huge 20 mil bottle. And I love these because the actual, the little stick is glass which I love. I just, I don't know. It feels more expensive to me. So anyways, yeah, these are beautiful oils, again, that you can find on Amazon, Jenny Glow Peony, and then Tag Her from our Moth. And then, and this is another one that it's like the whole house, I feel like is underrated. I do think that people are starting to discover them a little bit more. Um, I am hearing people talk about them a little bit more, but I do still think that, um, especially this next one we're gonna talk about is such an underrated gem. This is Pascal Morabito, and this one is called Pure Pearl. So I used to come across Pascal Morabitos a lot in TJ Maxx, but I don't see them there much anymore. Um, but this one in particular is so beautiful and underrated. The bottle and the name of it, Pure Pearl, would make you think that this is like a clean, um, you know, like a clean, a light clean fragrance, and it's definitely not. Um, this is, yeah, it's definitely not like a light clean fragrance. It's this is like a sweet, almost slightly nutty. It's got a little bit of a powdery vibe, but it's more of like a sweet, I don't want to say hypnotic poison because it doesn't smell like hypnotic poison, but it's that kind of fragrance. It's more of like the Azara Wanted Girl. Um, it's, oh my gosh, and as this one dries down, you do get a blast of fruits when you first spray this, but as it dries down, you start to get this beautiful kind of nuttiness, a little bit of a creaminess, a slightly powdery vibe. It is beautiful. It's such an underrated little fragrance. It, the only thing about this, it doesn't last that long. I want to say I got, I don't know, I can get maybe four or five hours out of this. It doesn't perform the best, but it's such... A, an affordable fragrance that it's no big deal to reapply it a couple times a day if you have to. 
But yeah, as this one dries down, it gets beautiful. Again, it's like a fruity, but slightly nutty, slightly powdery, kind of caramely smelling, just beautiful fragrance. It doesn't, the fragrance inside does not match this bottle or the name at all, but I do think that this is so underrated. Again, that is Pascal Morabito Pure Pearl, such a stunner. Okay, this next one, this is an old signature of mine, and I think that it is very underrated. It's been around for a very long time, and I very, very rarely hear anybody talk about this. Um, this is called Falling, Falling in Love from Philosophy, and this is a beautiful berry fragrance. This is probably my favorite berry fragrance I've ever smelled. It really is just sweet berries. It's quite linear. It smells exactly the same from the time you spray it on until it dries down. But this is a berry fragrance that actually lasts on my skin. Um, I used to, and I don't know if I've got a, a, an original bottle or a reformulated bottle. Um, a lot of people say the reformulated bottles don't last, um, that it's kind of like less than a body spray. So because of that, I'm wondering, because this lasts really well on me, and it always did when it was a signature of mine back in the early 2000s or early to mid 2000s, always lasted forever on me. I could easily apply it once in the morning and get through an entire day um, and still smell it. I mean, still smell it all the time. And I'm getting, I'm having that experience with this bottle. So it makes me wonder if I've got an older bottle. Um, I might be able to plug in this. Yeah, I might be able to plug in the code that I've got, the batch code that I've got on the bottom to find out. I'm not totally sure. But yeah, um, I love this. It's such a beautiful berry fragrance. And I just never hear anybody talk about it. So anyways, that is Falling in Love from Philosophy. And then this next one is one that I never hear anybody talk about this fragrance. This is another one that I sent a decant off to my friend and she immediately bought a bottle of it because it's such a gorgeous underrated gem. This is Fresh Brown Sugar. And this is a fragrance that came out, gosh, it came out a long time ago. I remember like pining over this um, every time I would go to Sephora and I, there was no way I was ever going to be able to afford it. But this is such a beautiful sugary lemon fragrance. And it's one that, again, it is like a beast. It lasts forever on my skin. I do overspray it quite a lot, um, but I love it. I do have an older bottle. I did specifically look for an older bottle, but I love it. It, brown sugar is like the perfect name for it. It is like, it is the most beautiful, sweet, sugary lemon fragrance that I've ever smelled. It is like, it's probably my favorite lemon fragrance ever. It's done so well and so perfectly. Yeah, it's just stunning. So anyways, that one, and I never hear anybody talk about it. It is still available at Sephora too. So um, it's definitely still out there. Um, she just picked up a bottle, I think from Sephora. So hers would be a, a newer bottle. Um, and I don't know, it, I'll have to see, I'll have to ask her um, if it performs, if it smells and performs the way the decant does that I sent. Um, because I would love to know if this has been reformulated, if it's still its original glory, what it is. So anyways, that is Fresh Brown Sugar and just such a stunning underrated gem. So anyways, guys, I didn't mean for this video to get as long as it did. I just couldn't stop talking about all of these gorgeous fragrances. These are all fragrances in my collection that every time I, I wear them, I think about them, I see them, I feel sad for how ignored a lot of them are for being such stunning fragrances. Um, I do hope that you all enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.